everybody. How do the teeth develop? Let's start with the epithelium of the oral cavity that forms this lebiogingival groove that will separate the lip from the gingiva. So we got the mesenchyma beneath the epithelium here. The ectodermal epithelium of stomodium. And this is the lebiogingival groove. It will separate the gingiva from the lip, including the mesenchyma here. Later on, the epithelium will invaginate furthermore, forming the primordium of dentition, of the second dentition, and the first dentition, which is larger. This epithelium invaginates into the underlying mesenchyma. So this is the second dentition primordium, which remains small. It's on the palatal or lingual side, respectively. In the upper jaw, it's in, in on the palatal side. In the lower jaw, it's on the lingual side relatively to the primordium of the first dentition. Primordium, which is larger. And this is called the dental lamina. So if we look on the jaw, And it, this process is similar in the upper and lower jaw. We will notice the lebiogingival sulcus here, separating the labi labium, the lip, from the gingiva. And here we got five primordia or for the first dentition, one, two, three, four, five. In the other quadrant, one, two, three, four, five. And on the palatal or lingual side, we got also primordia for the second dentition, one, two, three, four, five, plus three more, because uh, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. There will be eight primordia for the second dentition, but only five for the primary dentition. So this will be the uh, labia, labia, gingival sulcus, the groove separating the gingiva from the lip, lip gingiva, and. Uh, this will be the primordium for the first dentition. And second dentition. One, two, three, four, five. And for the second dentition also six, seven, and eight. So this dental lamina has this potential of forming the primordia 
of the teeth. Let's take one of these primordia and uh, look more closely on it. So it's connected to the surface epithelium and it grows to form a structure called dental cup. And the cells that will be arranged here, the, the cells of ectodermal origin, are called preamyloblasts. While inside the epithelium forms a rare form of epithelium, so called uh, ret reticular epithelium. Everywhere here is the mesenchyma. Uh, most of this mesenchyma comes from the neural crest. And here below the, in the concavity of the, of the dental cup, the mesenchyma is condensing like this. So, we got the epithelium of the oral cavity. Uh, the primordium for a second dentition that remains inactive, found it but inactive for now. But the primordium for the first dentition grows to form the dental cup. and has the cells called preamyloblasts. Well here the mesenchyma con uh, will become more dense. And we call it a dental Papilla. And this mesenchyma comes from, from the neural crest. Okay, this uh, further grows. So the next stage, that we'll describe still, is connected to the oral epithelium. There is still this, this small primordium for the second dentition, but the uh, dental cup becomes a huge organ called enamel organ that will form the uh, crown of the tooth. The preamyloblast pre will become outer amyloblasts here and inner amyloblasts. And we care especially about the inner amyloblasts that they will have the potential to of forming the enamel. Here inside we got a reticular epithelium, a very rare form, an unusual form of epithelium with many processes. That form a network of cells. Okay. And these inner amyloblasts are producing enamel. First, the enamel is not mineralized. There are some structural proteins and glycoproteins that will help to organize the orientation of the prisms of the uh, enamel, because enamel normally will become made of 95, 6, 8 percent 
uh, by the hydroxyapatite prisms. And what happens with this mesenchyma? The mesenchyma uh, from the mesenchyma cells called odontoblast odontoblast will differentiate and they will be organized in this manner here and not only in the region of the future crown of the tooth but also on, in the region of the f of the neck and ro root And that these odontoblasts will form processes and uh, they will produce dentin, for which I'm using blue color. The rest of the mesenchyma of this papilla will become the, the uh, pulp so I will include some fibroblasts, star-shaped and spindle-shaped fibroblasts of the dental pulp. Very loose connective tissue with many blood vessels branching here. And also nerve fibers branching here. And the rest of the meso surrounding mesenchyma forms uh, a so-called dental follicle that will later on differentiate into cementum, periodontal ligaments, and the alveolar periost later on. So let's label the, the structures we got on the scheme. This is the oral epithelium. This will be the enamel organ. Inside there is a reticular epithelium, a rare form of epithelium. The cells on the surface are called the outer Ameloblasts and the inner ameloblasts. And the in inner ameloblasts are producing enamel. Drawn in red here. Well, the uh, odontoblasts here that are of mesenchyma origin. are producing the dentin. So we got both of these heart tissues and we definitely need to understand which cells are the source of enamel and which are the source of uh, dentin. This will become the uh, dental pulp with blood vessels and nerves and this is the dental follicle that will later on differentiate the periodontal ligaments and the alveolar, alveolar uh, periostum and also the cementum in the region of the root of the, of the tooth. This contact between the inner and outer ameloblasts is called the Hertwig sheath 
H E R T W I G Hertwix sheath and that's where the potential to produce the enamel stops. I believe this uh, requires a more detailed scheme so I'll make a close-up view of this region and a special picture showing the inner ameloblasts <coughs> producing the enamel that will become gradually mineralized. On the opposite side we got the odontoblasts. Each odontoblast is, is sending a process called the Tommy's fiber and these odontoblasts are producers of dentin Dentin forms canaliculi. Uh, each canaliculus contains the Tommy's fiber. So that's the reason, f origin of the canalicular structure of dentin. And the first layer of dentin has significantly different color in histological sections. It's called pre-dentin that has not been mineralized yet. And there will be the tooth pulp here. The fibroblasts of the dental pulp with the capillaries and nerves. So these are the inner ameloblasts producing the enamel and these are the odontoblasts, the cell bodies of the odontoblasts. Each sending a, a fiber called Tomes, T-O-M-E-S Tommy's fibers and the odontoblasts are producing the dentin. These microscopic spaces, each containing uh, the Tommy's fibers, are called canaliculi. The canaliculi of dentin. And this uh, unmineralized form of dentin is called predentin. Otherwise, the, here is the dental pulp. Now we understand why we cannot replace the enamel after the eruption of the teeth, because after eruption of the tooth, uh, uh, of a tooth, we are losing this. Uh, enamel organ, it's gone. We we don't have any more ameloblasts, therefore we don't have any cells with the potential to create new enamel. The enamel we will lose during our lifetime will never be replaced again after eruption of teeth. But we do retain the odontoblasts here um, on the border between the dental pulp and the dentin. And the odontoblasts keep forming new dentin during our whole lifetime, or as so uh, so far the, the tooth has a, a viable dental pulp. And this uh, dentin that is being produced after the tooth eruption is called secondary dentin, unlike the primary dentin that is present in, in the at the time point of the tooth eruption and even when when uh, uh, stimulated by some by some stimuli the odontoblast can uh, produce a reparative tertiary dentin with somehow different structure <coughs>